Hi, Moses. Hi, Tracy. Okay, so we're going to get started. And um, I wanted to talk at first a little bit about adoption trauma and generational trauma. Can you talk more about what you mean when you say adoption trauma? Yeah, yes. Uh, I, I, I'd be happy to talk about uh, adoption trauma and generational trauma. Um, th these are things that I've been vocalizing and advocating and uh, speaking up about um, uh, in the adoption spaces um, and hopefully outside the adoption spaces, you know, getting into um, the broader communities. Um, um, so, you know, it's nice to be among uh, others who are also talking about these things, um, understanding uh, that adoption does come from a traumatic loss. Uh, and, um, you know, I like uh, quoting Paul Sutherland as well in that he talks about multiple losses, multiple traumas um, that have to do specifically with the experience of being adopted. Uh, so when I talk about adoption trauma, it's recognizing there's trauma that occurs for the adoptees. Um, I also wanna recognize that there's potential trauma for the uh, for the parents as well, uh, and other family members, um, and uh, you know that there are uh, that there are experiences leading up to uh, the adoption occurring, um, and uh, that could also be traumatizing for for the parents. Um, so uh, when I identify adoption trauma. Uh, for adoptees, it's really recognizing these multiple losses prior to the actual adoption occur, you know, occurring. And, and these kinds of, you know, tr traumas, these kind of like traumatic losses are like the loss of uh, self, the loss of uh, culture, the loss of race, the loss of um, just multiple aspects of your identity. Some might even feel like the loss of their entire identity. Um, and, uh, you know, just um, <clears throat> losing um, as well the ability to have any control over um, who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, so the event of it being adopted, uh, really, it also takes away our, our voice um, and our sense of just who we are. Uh, so all that's specific to the adoption experience. Right, and, and those are very specific to adoptees as well. But we also know that um, birth parents experience trauma as part of the, the loss. Adoptive parents can experience loss as well, whether it's infertility or um, a variety of different things and losses of their own. Mm -hmm. And all of those mm -hmm. losses are things that people need to heal from. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, yeah, and I, I, I appreciate, um, you know, bringing up their perspectives as well. And it, when it comes to generational trauma, it, you know, certainly what you're talking about, um, the choices, decisions, and experiences leading up to, uh, say, a de decision to relinquish or a decision to adopt a child, um, <clears throat> that there's um, a pattern, if you will, uh, from their childhood, the way that they were raised. Um, and we can take it back generationally. So it's understanding that, there, that there's this broader family context, you know, that from generation to generation, certain things get passed along, Pattern, patterns, dynamics um, within relationships, attachment styles, uh, you know, um, responses to abuse, neglect, uh, 
Um, and, um, you know, these things get passed along generationally. And if, if you have experienced something of, you know, uh, uh, you know, traumatic um, level, uh, and you don't resolve that, you don't address it, you don't even acknowledge it, um, and you, you know, inadvertently, you know, unintentionally, subconsciously, you know, that gets passed along generationally. Um, so that's where there, there's a lot of talk about the importance of adoptive parents um, who make this choice you know, to raise a child, to take a child into their, into their homes, for them to take a look at themselves, to do whatever kind of healing, whatever kind of therapy, what, whatever kind of um, uh, resolving of uh, those issues. So they don't pass those on to their child, which, you know, um, just continues that cycle, continues that pattern. Right. And also to recognize that adoption starts with a loss and to know that their child may feel that differently throughout different stages of their life. Do you see that in, in your work and in, in the lives of your siblings? And mm, mm. Um, So, yeah, so I mean like really opening this up, uh, Tracy, uh, because, um, it's not necessarily just this, like you're adopted and this one time, uh, event in your life, uh, and then you can proceed. It's the ongoing experience of adoption, uh, the ongoing experience of, uh, um, you know, figuring out, uh, um, how to, in a way, reclaim yourself. You know, so uh, it's like, um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure this is out there, but, um, you know, for those uh, coming into adoption, um, uh, taking interest in adoption, uh, there's this process called coming out of the fog, coming out of the adoption fog, coming out of the adoptee fog. It's really just recognizing that adoption does start with a loss. And that, that trauma, you know, thankfully based on, you know, the works of Bessel van der Kolk and um, uh, um, Steve Porges, Peter Levine, you know, where it's recognized, you no, know, trauma is a whole body experience. The body remembers. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so really until you start putting those connections together, you know, connecting those dots, um, trauma is known to repeat itself. You know, there are repeated trauma cycles um, and it can happen in your relationships. It can happen in your attachment, you know, in your attachment styles. It could happen, um, you know, in the way that you see yourself in the way that you treat yourself. Uh, and, um, you know, it's um, this, uh, you know, just this thing of not feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And this then that triggering the need to be self-protective, which then leads to the fight, flight, freeze, fawn responses. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> for myself growing up, I didn't recognize any of this because there was no you know, uh, books or, you know, known uh, really information or about. studies or, mm -hmm. or even just like, I wasn't aware of others uh, sharing and talking um, and writing their memoirs and, and, you know, bringing it to light. Um, so I was living, living through it. I was living in the fog growing up. Um, and, um, you know, but we have, we now have some outcomes or outcome data, out, outcome statistics, you know, to recognize the self-destructiveness, self-sabotaging, addiction issues, mental health um, issues, 
that come with being adopted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the big statistic that I put out there quite a lot, and I think a number of other adoptees and adoption professionals put out there, is that um, uh, we know adoptees are four times more likely to attempt suicide. And within that realm, we know that thinking about suicide is not just like a one-time, you know, uh, thing that it can be a, a reoccurrence, uh, an ongoing theme in your life. Um, and, um, you know, so with all this for me uh, and what I've been putting out there with my siblings, I have three siblings um, who have all died by suicide. Um, at that younger age, um, you know, where th this, this statistic comes from, uh, you know, adolescence to young adult, um, you know. And uh, so, you know, m my brother Thaddeus was 27. Um, and uh, my, my sister Tom had uh, you know, uh, was, you know, around college age, uh, you know, also, you know, 20 or so. Um, and, um, you know, my sister Lark, uh, you know, she was in her mid thirties, uh, you know, um, and was a little bit further in her life, but, uh, um, but in any case, um, uh, you know, it's, important to really like come out of the fog right uh, you know for just so many reasons and it's important to have all this all this out there and and share it and, and talk about it and bring it up and, and um, make it normal make it known because the more we talk about it and and we let people know this is normal the more they can start working on these issues um, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought up that statistic about adoptees being four times greater to commit suicide. We hear it a lot. Um, and I looked it up. So I just, if anybody wants to look up the study, it was published by the official journal uh, for the American Board of Pediatrics in October of 2013. So, you know, I know we hear the statistic a lot and I just want to let people know it's, it's, it's a real statistic. This is something that we really want to make people aware of. And I'm so sorry that you had had to deal with so much loss already in your life, Moses. Um, not only the adoptional trauma and the other things that you lived through growing up in the childhood and, and life that you had, but then to lose three siblings to, to death by suicide, that's, that's yeah. a lot to deal with. So I'm it it is, yes. It's very courageous of you to, to speak out about this and to let people know. Um, so let's talk a little bit about suicide. People are, a lot of times people wonder what to say if somebody's talking about suicide. Um, what do you suggest? Does it make someone more likely to die by suicide if we talk about it? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, in fact, it might encourage talking more about it uh, and normalize it, um, get it away from uh, not talking about it and feeling ashamed or feeling um, uh, like it's not okay, you know, something to keep to yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, when we uh, think about um, that space of feeling very much alone uh, and feeling uh, you know, very much in just in despair and, you know, um, and, you know, being, being in a, a state of, um, um, <clears throat> not wanting to live, not wanting to live with a certain kind of pain, you know, um, you know, just not wanting it. Um, just not wanting to experience that uh, and feeling, you know, pretty hopeless and helpless, you know, that uh, it's never going to change. Um, 
So it's a very, it's a very lonely space. Uh, I've certainly, um, you know, appreciated the um, support and sharing of other people who have also, you know, had similar experiences, um, who've been uh, struggling with suicide um, uh, with those feelings. Uh, and, you know, that, that, um, uh, that place uh, as I have as well. And so, so, so much um, comes from connecting with others, you know, yeah. And just having that, having that um, be like just a shared experience uh, of recognizing, oh yes, this is real. This is something that um, is happening to so many of us. And what I, what I really say, too many of us, um, because there is this overarching um, stigma or shame uh, and that comes from, you know, this, um, you know, very powerful narrative that when we're adopted, it's really, you know, we're being saved from, you know, a certain, certain fate or, you know, a certain, you know, living condition or, um, uh, you know, uh, something that, um, uh, you know, we wouldn't have survived if we hadn't been adopted. So uh, it then just lends to saying, well, yeah, we, we should be grateful for being adopted and be, you know, be grateful, um, you know, for being saved, uh, which then really just kind of, you know, locks us into, well, uh, there's no room to feel anything else. Mm -hmm. When the beginning of our conversation, there is so much more that we need to process, we need to, you know, face, we need to resolve, we need to heal from. Right, we need to talk about those losses. And I would say it not only locks adoptees into a certain role of, you know, being grateful, it can lock adoptive parents into a certain role and put them on a pedestal or, or you're such good people for taking him or her into your life or, you know, for becoming parents like that. Um, and that's maybe not a, a good thing to do to, to adoptive parents either. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, really, pull, you know, pulling the lens further back um, just the whole process of adoption, the practice of adoption, it, it really adds so much more pressure than necessary. It adds so much more um, uh, complication to an already complex and complicated uh, um, experience. Uh, right. you know. And I love that you use those words, the complex and complicated. You know, when I think when society looks at adoption, we really, that's not the words they think of, you know, outside of, of this, this space that mm -hmm. we're talking about um, in the adoption community where, where we talk about things like loss and the complex and complicated things. Um, but for society at large, not mm, so much. I mean, Tracy, uh... You know, there, there, there are so many, uh, so many uh, layers. You know, so many directions, so much to uncover, so much to unpack. Um, uh, you know, complex doesn't, you know, doesn't hit the mark. Um, and you know, you can really get lost in, um, you know, trying to recover from. Uh, you know, the adoption trauma, the adoption traumas. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, um, um, it's, you know, difficult, it's difficult to accept. It's difficult. I mean, 
it's really like it's unacceptable. I'm gonna put it that way. It, it's it's un unacceptable that uh, you know certain adoption practices have remained in place with the kinds of outcomes and the kinds of um, understanding about trauma, the understanding of uh, you know loss uh, and, and uh, you know what happens um, after you know, the adoption day. Uh, and, you know, to your point, um, uh, so much emphasis, so much um, attention is put on that day. Mm -hmm. The one time event. You know, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and then you're with your forever family. And, you know, now you're a family. Now, now it's going to be, you know, uh, happily ever after. Ever after. Um, where I've I've spoken to too many too many adoptive parents, uh, and heard too many stories of multiple hospitalizations, multiple placements, um, multiple calls to the police and the authorities, um, multiple visits to the emergency departments and emergency rooms, um, uh, and too many of them saying. I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't told. I wasn't informed. I, I didn't know, you know, what I was really getting into. Mm -hmm. And for some of them, I, when they connect with me uh, in therapy, it's been five years, 10 years, 15 years, where, you know, now they're at a different stage in their, in their lives or a different stage in their families. Um, and too many of them say, you know, we wish we connected with you 10 years ago or 12 years ago. And I've come to a point uh, where I, I come back and I say, well, truth be known, or, you know, the truth is, I was living through my own journey of coming out of the fog. Mm. That we are, we are, not fully established, even though we, we need to be, we have to be, that this is still a, an ongoing lived experience for my generation, maybe for the generation before me, uh, and certainly generations after of adoptees. Um, my hope is like these conversations and bringing this up and, you know, and all the efforts that uh, adoptees and adoption professionals and who are really clued into coming out of the fog, talking about adoption and trauma and generational traumas, saying we need, we need you know, mental health services, we need to identify this as its, as its own experience, separate from you know, PTSD or ADHD or depression, anxiety, bipolar, all the other kind of psychiatric disorders, you know, um, that this is something that needs to be identified and, you know, really put out there. Um, so the generations coming up, we will have done the work to help them be more established. Yes. And to have the language and the help and the services in place and, and policies and practices as well. So what advice do you have for adult adoptees who are starting to come out of the fog and for adoptive parents who have minor adoptees in their home? Mm. Those are really two separate things. <laughs> mm. So for, Adult adoptees like myself, or you know, Me. early early adulthood, or, you know, at any stage of adulthood, um, just uh, recognizing, oh, there is this process of um, unpacking and unveiling, and really coming out of the fog, uh, which for me is is really starting to build an understanding of, oh, there is a traumatic loss. Oh, I have been 
doing things to myself or making choices for myself or engaging in in ways with people and relationships and work and uh, otherwise, uh, you know, that take on a certain uh, um, pattern of like self-destructiveness or risk-taking or uh, uh, self-sabotaging, um, you know, um, and in a way to say, I see where it fits in, you know, and, and thankfully there are, there are uh, professionals uh, and there are adoptees, um, uh, you know, who are uh, advocating for more awareness of this, mm -hmm. uh, who are talking about this. And, um, you know, uh, as we were saying, it's all about connecting. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and saying, hmm, uh, I'm not going at this alone, you know, and I'm not, I'm yeah, not just living with a certain feeling that's, you know, like always been there, but I haven't really like paid attention enough, or I haven't really, you know, uh, identified it before. You know, that, and there's um, lots of ways that we can connect now. I, you know, I think there's so many different opportunities. There's lots of books and resources. There's podcasts. There's um, discussion groups being done virtually or um, Facebook groups, you know, listening to great advocates like yourself. You know, there are so many opportunities now for adoptees that, you know, it's really for coming out of the fog right now today is a lot easier than it maybe has been in the past. So. Mm, mm. You're, you're absolutely right, uh, Tracy. Yeah, so the, those kind of like concrete spaces and places and people um, and uh, with a range of different ways you want to engage, whether it's over video or reading someone's memoir or uh, following someone's blog or podcast, uh, or, you know, social media groups, uh, you know, as you're saying. Um, the one caveat that I would say is uh, adoption, adoption isn't, um, you know, uh, what's the word, monolithic, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's not like there was more experience, you know, so it's, oh, great, I'll join a group or I'll, it's really, Paying attention to where you're at mm -hmm. and then finding people who are maybe in a similar space as you or, you know, in a similar part, in point in their journey uh, as, as you are in yours, maybe a bit further along, you know, but um, it's important to not just put it out there, you know, in a broad stroke, but you're absolutely right. Um, there are so many different ways of connecting and engaging. And, and, well, and, and the great opportunity about that is, is like you said, not everything's going to work for you, but you can keep trying different things to find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Moses, a question that I get a lot when I'm talking to people, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you know, lots of people say they're adoption competent therapists or counselors. Well, how do you recommend finding somebody who's a right fit and who really understands adoption? Mm. If you're looking for, if someone's looking for a counselor, mm -hmm. therapist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so there's there's a couple um, a couple points I want to make. Um, you know, just leading into this, I wanted to go back to you know what adoptive parents. Oh yes, please. Uh, you know, it was a two, it was a two-parter. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I and this is leading into what you're what you're talking about. Uh, to really engage in therapy, you know, um, uh, to recognize, you know, that whatever might be going on for you, it's just always good to check in, and it's it is good to check in with another point of view. Um, you know, someone else, you know, with someone else. Uh, so that's, that's really like my, my go-to um, for adoptive parents is, 
you know, check yourself out. Um, you know, take a look and, and, you know, recognize, you know, certain things about yourself and, and do the work. Um, so we don't keep, you know, this generational trauma, you know, going uh, and, and just, you know, adding in a whole extra layer to um, something that's already very much complex. So uh, along this line, um, uh, there is an article that uh, was put out by um, uh, a few um, adoptees who are uh, therapists, uh, you know, mental health professionals. Um, it was put out by um, I Am Adoptee. Okay. Um, and it was, you know, quite a, a comprehensive article um, about finding the right fit, but really understanding, uh, you know, the different layers of adoption, types of adoption, and going through that process of um, uh, searching for, you know, a therapist. Um, so, uh, you know, I do recommend that. Um, you know, I also recommend uh, uh, reaching out to Desenia Palmer. Uh, she um, runs I'm Adopted um, and, you know, quite active on social media, Facebook and Instagram. Um, she is, for me, a go-to mental health resource. Okay. Um, and um, um, I also have put out, um, uh, it's a website, uh, growbeyondwords.com, mm -hmm. and they have, it's an adoptee uh, therapist directory. So the therapists on that directory are all adoptees. Okay. Um, and again, you know, I'm wanting to be careful and more specific about um, paying attention to what is a good fit. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just knowing that it doesn't, doesn't um, uh, you know, like it doesn't cover it with just saying, oh yes, uh, talk to any adoptee, um, you know, or just like in general, getting the adoptee's perspective is, is helpful but more, more specific to um, where they might be at in their journey. You know, how much work have they done for themselves? Um, how comfortable they are with um, addressing certain things. Um, and, um, you know, but uh, I do see, you know, a great benefit of uh, connecting with like an adoptee who also is in the mental health uh, field. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So we're coming up on a half an hour now. So I want to make sure we leave room for questions. Is there anything mm -hmm. else you wanted to say before we wrap up this part of it? Um, no, I, I, I just hope that we, we've opened some things up, uh, you know, that we've uh, provided something, you know, value. Uh, you know, for the people tuning in now, as well as the people who will be tuning in, you know, at some later time. Um, and, uh, you, you know, that this is just part of an ongoing, much broader uh, conversation. Um, and really, I guess to, you know, bring this part to conclusion, it's, we're really at the point of needing to bring our adoption community together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, identifying that as adoptees, there's a particular culture about being adopted, you know, that needs to have its own place and existence and space. Um, and I feel like, you know, we're at, we've been at a point, but we're really at a point now of really like saying we got to, own that space. We got to create that space. We got to, you know, have that kind of foundation. Um, and, you know, then across the board, uh, the broader adoption community, you know, have its place in society, have its place in these other areas of mental health, 
for example. Like I am advocating for uh, connecting with um, suicide prevention organizations. Um, and this is really what it comes down to is saving adoptee lives. It's not okay. Like it's, it's unacceptable that there's one way of looking at adoption that's separate from the reality of what happens as we get older, as we, you know, confront um, the truths and realities of what, what it means to be adopted. Um, and uh, so it's really important that we have these conversations, we bring our community together and we really find this, um, this point of unity around saving lives. Like it's not, it's not okay that it, is allowed to continue so thank you so much for having this conversation and um i i really appreciate it i know it comes from your heart and it, the work that you do is so important and the, the awareness that you're bringing to these really important issues um thank you so much for that and now we're going to stop the recorded part and open up questions so Okay. Hi, Moses. Hello, Tracy. Hello, everybody. Okay, so we're gonna get started with some of the questions that have been submitted um, previous to tonight. And one of them was how can we raise the voices of adoptees and birth parents? Of adoptees and birth parents. That was the question. Yep. Hmm. Mm. Uh, so you're certainly welcome to um, uh, share your stories uh, as, as you know your uh, as much as you're comfortable sharing um, to um, you know in the way of uh, helping people to understand uh, your experiences what what's you know what it's like. Um, and, um, uh, I think a couple of things that I'd like to, to really hone in on, um, you know, and I'm really in a way appreciating this, uh, at this time, uh, you know, I, I heard, you know, Betsy mentioning, uh, another, um, uh, series addressing DNA, um, and the experiences of going through, um, uh, birth family searches and DNA testing and um, uh, I, I remember, you know, a decade ago uh, or so where we were just grappling with, oh, uh, people are finding or adoptees are finding their birth parents or vice versa over social media, over Facebook and having these kind of like secret meetings or secret connections um, away from their adoptive parents. Um, and in a way like, uh, how do we address um, helping uh, these family members, you know, reconnect or reunite or do it in a way that um, doesn't create more harm uh, or more pain or, you know, trigger more, more traumas. Um, and, um, you know, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me, the separation of language. Uh, and I, you know, I really want to, um, like hone in on how important language is and how we, uh, you know, bring meaning to, our experience, um, you know, we call it the adoption triad, you know, uh, for us involved, um, how we identify ourselves, how we talk about the process, how we talk about, uh, 
you know, our families, uh, our connections with one another. Um, and something came to light about when we get married, it's, you know, a re, uh, it's a, a union right, of a couple, uh, but it's also a union of family members, um, of families. Um, and, uh, you know, it's understood, it's accepted, it's, it's understanding that, uh, uh, oh, this is a uh, blending of families and this is to be celebrated. This is to be um, something that is, is just uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, and, you know, not to oversimplify and not to overgeneralize, uh, but um, there's been something about closed adoptions. There's been something about the, the secrecy of adoption. There's been something about needing to protect um, uh, rights of birth parents, of adoptees, of adopted parents, of you know, the people involved um, uh, that has prevented this idea of, oh, this is to be celebrated as a blending of family. I love the way that you made that connection to marriage and, you know, an adoption reunion. I, when I'm working with people in, in the journey of search and, you know, they want to know more about this. And I kind of, when I'm talking about it, I say, you know, I'm a mother. I have two children. I don't love one of them less because I had another one. And the same can work in reverse. As a daughter, I have a, a birth mother and, and an adoptive mother. It doesn't make me love either one of them less. less. It's, it's not a pie, it's, it's not divided. So I love the, the idea of connecting like as in marriage and, and expanding our, what we envision as a family. Um. Uh, well, uh, I'm 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 glad you're you're liking that. Uh, the the couple, you know, things that um, you know come to the come to the surface is, uh, I think, you know, the attitudes, the values, the um, socializing, the you know, the way we've been socialized, uh, you know, to understand this and see this and, um, and view it, uh, it being, you know, adoption. Um, um, I'm, I'm now on the point of really just doing away with, um, you know, as much as I can, the prefixes of adoptive and birth or first or natural or, you know, the terms that have come up um, and say, no, your parents, mm -hmm. you know, that um, uh, there needs to be something honored there, uh, uh, you know, for, you know, both sets of parents. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm also wanting to do away with the term for us being adoptees. Um, and uh, you know, bring up um, another another term or another uh, way of describing uh, our experience. Um, you know, so in terms of um, you know the you know the question, uh, I think I you know I I bring it back to. Um, where we kind of left it off about, or where I kind of left it off about um, uh, feeling good and safe about being part of the adoption community. Great, okay. And um, here's another question that I love because we need more wonderful adoption therapists. 
Um, and this was, what is your advice for aspiring adoption therapists? Okay. Um, uh, yes. Um, so uh, I'm going to address this pretty directly uh, just to, you know, uh, prepare everybody um, uh, that I can speak about my own experience as an adoption therapist, as an adoptee with my own experience, um, both personally and professionally. Um, I think that, you know, I've landed uh, in a place of uh, appreciating my lived experience and feeling that that's okay to bring into the therapeutic relationship uh, and the therapeutic space. Uh, for me, I kind of feel like it's necessary um, and uh, uh, not to, you know, knock my, my graduate program, um, my graduate studies, uh, my graduate training uh, as a, a marriage and family therapist, but um, uh, there was this mentality of, oh no, it should focus on your client, uh, that you remain kind of a, a blank slate and not to bring your own stuff and, you know, deal with the transference, counter-transference issues. And mm -hmm. um, so from that point of view, being adopted, I think is really important. Um, and so I would encourage, you know, adoptees, those who are adopted, who are inclined to enter the mental health field specifically to work in uh, uh, the field of adoption or the profession of adoption uh, therapy, adoption trauma therapy, um, to, you know, certainly do that work for yourself to have those lived experiences of coming out of the fog, of um, being in therapy uh, and, um, you know, Going, going through that, um, that process for yourself and knowing that there is so much to unpack, um, and, you know, and, uh, you know, just following the last question of, you know, being in a birth family re reunion or birth family search um, is something unique to being adopted and has, uh, you know, its own uh, realm of uh, complexities and, and the things that, um, in a way, reunion uh, sheds it uh, sheds a light, a certain connotation around it, where hmm, some reunions aren't all that pleasant, all that beautiful, all that um, you know. Uh, well, so, we could do a whole nother hour on reunions and and search and <laughs> for sure, for sure, but. Um, yeah. But it, so if I may, um, my last point about um, those, you know, aspiring to be uh, 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 in the mental field for, adop for adoption, um, I am understanding that there are adoption competence, competency trainings um, and that there are those already in the field who aren't adopted, who may be adopted parents, uh, you know, already as like social workers and therapists themselves. And, um, you know, there's just so many complexities, but um, uh, the very, very least is really listen, 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 listen to adoptees. Uh, those of us who have lived experiences, who are grappling with uh, the realities that we are uncovering for ourselves. Uh, it's really, really important, this, this initial step to listen, 
to be for us to be seen and heard and validated, acknowledged for the things that we experience, um, uh, to have that sense of safety and being understood, uh, and uh, you know, to um, get there, it's in a way doing it for yourselves first. And that's where, you know, building up your own self-awareness, diving into your own work, taking um, that time for yourself, uh, self-reflection and exploration, uh, develop those skills of listening and being able to acknowledge those things within yourself first. Great advice. Okay, so moving on, we had a couple questions about policy. I don't know if you have any thing to add about these things. One is what's the best way to get this information into policy changes? And the other um, is how to how to open records. Okay, so we love these two part questions, don't we? Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, wonderful, important questions. Um, really on point questions. Uh, so policy. Um, I know, uh, you know, here in, in the US, um, there is an organization that works on the Hill or has worked on the Hill that um, does spend time bringing issues uh, and stories of adoption to legislators, to representatives and um, policymakers, uh, lawmakers. Um, and, um, you know, I, I would say it's really important to not just build awareness, but uh, I, I would want to say encourage those of us in adoption um, and maybe even perhaps, you know, because I'm uh, biased towards adoptees, uh, being an adoptee, to um, find a way to enter into politics. Um, to have that uh, hands-on representation. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, I was just talking with uh, another, uh, another adoptee earlier about, about this and um, representation is key. And I think um, it's important um, to have those allies as well I know that in a number of states, um, birth certificates, original birth certificates have been uh, ac uh, made accessible. Here uh, in Ohio, Adoption Network worked on that for over 25 years until it was finally passed. Hmm, well, that, that, that's wonderful. Um, and um, yes, uh, do not give, give up hope um keep fighting the good fight uh and it's um you know more outspoken people getting onto platforms stages getting into um you know hearings and and legislative sessions uh forming groups you know here in connecticut there's uh access connecticut um uh doing a really wonderful job um fighting the good fight. So uh, little by little, but um, um, you know, the go-to uh, uh, arguments have been it's access to our own information. You know, that, it, that there is a human right to knowing who we are. Uh, there's also been the, uh, the argument for uh, medical necessity and medical Absolutely. history. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's finding these uh, targeted um, uh, points and arguments to say, <clears throat> this is this is about saving our lives. Right. Well, and now with DNA, we can really, you know, DNA and our ability to find people has really outpaced the laws and the laws really need to catch up because it would be much easier for everyone if an adoptee could get their original birth certificate and connect directly with their birth parents as opposed to 
going through DNA and sometimes connecting with extended relatives. Um, and it's just, you know, there's a lot of expense, but also it's not as direct and private and confidential as, you know, the natural birth certificate would be. So um, we're gonna slide through a couple of these questions that are coming up on chat. Okay. Um, Somebody wanted to know if there was any study on the suicide rate with adoptees in open adoptions versus adoptions in versus closed adoptions. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, thank you for asking that question. Uh, I'm going to broad, broad stroke this uh, as you're saying to, you know to fly through these, um, but um, as you can tell, I'm I'm not a quick talker, so. Uh, <laughs> But um, broad stroking this, there is a tremendous lack of studies and research um, in adoption uh, in general, specifically for adoptees in general. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, saying that specifically uh, in general. So um, this is part of my um, advocacy, part of my mission to. Um, start getting into the these other realms of uh, organizations working on suicide prevention for a number of other social entities and groups um, other populations this is why i'm saying we have to identify ourselves as a community as an entity uh, in order to be seen by these organizations doing research for other populations and other, you know, certainly important work for these other groups. Um, uh, and, um, you know, it's been wonderful to have uh, uh, researchers uh, exploring the different uh, realms of adoption, but um, suicide uh, uh, is definitely one that should be a top priority. Okay, and are there any current movements to propose an updated category specific to adoption trauma in the DSM? Um, not that I know of. Uh, I, you know, understand complex PTSD and developmental trauma. Um, you know, I, I, I did mention Paul Sutherland um, when we spoke. Really appreciate his talks and his bringing up um, new categories of understanding uh, trauma, but I'm really wanting adoption trauma um, as its own uh, uh, way of understanding our experience. Okay, well, thank you so much, Moses. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Betsy, but first I just wanted to let everybody know we are going to be sending out an email to everyone who registered tonight with links to um, some of the, the sites that Moses was talking about. They'll actually be um, on our resources page for adult adoptees and birth parents, um, the Adoption Network page as well. So thank you, Moses. And Betsy, I'll turn it over to you. OK. Um, thank you so much, Moses. And thank you, Tracy, for um, doing the interview. I hope everybody got a lot out of the presentation this evening. There's so much different content that we can touch on. Um, and uh, so we will definitely be continuing the conversation in many different ways. Um, as many of you know, Adoption Network Cleveland is a nonprofit organization serving individuals and families impacted by adoption, kinship, and foster care through advocacy, education, and support. Um, we uh, have programming throughout the month that's available to everyone. You don't have to live in Cleveland or in Ohio. Um, and you can see that on our calendar. I did post the link in the chat and the website is adoptionnetwork.org. We have lots of different programming throughout the month, every month. Um, and it's all virtual right now. And uh, we're very excited to be partnering with experts in our national, state and local community to be offering this Monday evening speaker series. Um, we are a membership organization and we hope that you'll consider joining as a member. We, um, to find out more about the organization and to su support our work, you can check out the website. And uh, please um, think about joining us next Tuesday, February 2nd, for our panel on DNA discoveries, dealing with the emotional impact of DNA testing. 
um, co-sponsored with AKA in Austin. And you can see our calendar for full upcoming programs. Thanks again for joining us this evening and have a good rest of your night. Hey everyone. Uh, so we have just wrapped uh, the event uh, tonight. Uh, we had a really wonderful turnout and we had a really wonderful uh, talk um, about um, adoption trauma and generational trauma. Uh, and then we uh, had a, a question and answer time uh, at the end. This is something that I had wanted to bring up um, during that time. Uh, and hopefully it will make it into the video here. So uh, this is something that's happening right now. Um, the president of South Korea has held a press conference uh, and has addressed um, the uh, tragic death of a Korean adoptee infant um, in Korea. Uh, and uh, the statements made uh, during his press conference has uh, really ignited a response from the adoptee community uh, and certainly, you know, from Korean adoptees like myself, uh, where um, there is a core group um, uh, of adoptees who have put together a petition that is live right now on change.org. And it is change.org backslash, we are not a thing. Uh, this is in direct response to the present statements uh, that if uh, things aren't working well or not a good match or that uh, uh, the adoptive parents can uh, simply return us or exchange us uh, or change us out. Um, and so uh, that has just amplified um, our trauma responses, our uh, lived experiences um, as adoptees uh, who do struggle with um, this side of our identity uh, feeling um, that we are dehumanized. Uh, so uh, to have that confirmed by the president of, uh, of our home country um, as a Korean adoptee, uh, it is just tremendously painful um, and simply wrong. Uh, um, so uh, I want to bring attention to our efforts um, as an adoptee community, specifically for the, the you know this core group uh, who are um, really acting as a task force to uh, bring to light uh, these underlying issues of being adopted, as well as um, uh, identifying uh, specific areas. Uh, that need to be addressed, that need to, uh, in a way, um, uh, be rectified um, in terms of, you know, providing new policy and uh, support and mental health. Um, uh, so uh, this is going to be an ongoing effort, but right now there is this petition on change.org backslash, we are not a thing. Uh, I urge anyone and everyone to go there, sign this petition, share it, and help us um, to raise awareness as well as uh, um, lead towards uh, real action um, and resolution for uh, uh, things like the death and, and murder of uh, this infant adoptee, uh, which unfortunately happens too often too much. Uh, so we are really putting um, our foot down. We are really saying this cannot continue. And um, we really need everybody's help to um, uh, bring awareness, as well as bring about the change that needs to happen 
to save adoptee lives. Thanks.